Right, good evening. A uh, huge welcome back to Rob B with the identity and presumption of authority. Rob runs the Ashton Freedom Advocates Meet in Wigan each Wednesday from 8ish, which focuses on peaceful solutions in law and self-education, <coughs> where everyone seems to be big. Tonight, Rob focuses on the identity which on the surface is just who we are, is it not? Maybe it's a little bit more than this. It could be a legal or lawful significance to the identity that may benefit us to know. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rob Lee. Uh, good evening. Okay. <laughs> good evening. Uh, my name's Rob. Uh, some, of, some new faces in here are just absolutely fantastic guys. We have got a wealth of knowledge to share with you. Uh, if this is new to you, it's going to be a real journey. I promise you now, it's, uh, once you learn this stuff, it comes with a caveat. Once you start learning the truth, what's happened behind the scenes, you can never go back. You can never go back to the comfortable life you've had. It will change how you, how you view the world and how you view yourselves. I do, uh, I, not so much, I don't run the Ashton Meet. Uh, we are uh, co coordinated, but we've got, uh, we started that two and a half, three years ago now, and uh, we've all gone on leaps and bounds of knowledge. We knew nothing three years ago, and my God, we know what now. Uh, some fantastic people over in the Ashton meet, the both to meet, Liverpool, we're all over the place now. Uh, we share information for free, we all do our research, we're all in the course, testing the course, writing our letters, accosting individuals, etc. You get information and try to share that information with everybody. So if I learn something, you get it the next day. Yeah? I do a radio show that is a kids class radio over, over in Manchester. Fantastic show. I've also got a slot I've just started up again on No Borders Radio. Uh, I would urge you to 6, six o'clock to 9 o'clock on a Sunday evening. Uh, and I information dump. I'm not going to do an information dump tonight. Because I realise there's some new people there and I was completely lazy standing if we went to the wall, yeah. Uh, so we're going to have a bit of fun tonight. Unusually, we're going to have a bit of fun and not just do a, a lecture on law. Uh, so the, the concept is, if you're going to move forward, before you start accusing everyone else, if you see that corporate thing where when you point your finger at somebody, three fingers pointing back, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. You've got to look at yourself. Are you in the right place? Who's at fault here? Is that, a quote, I like to uh, quote this a lot. This is sort of my mantra. And it's by a chap called Alexander Rolcott, and he said, I'm tired of hearing it said that democracy doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. We are supposed to work it. What can I say? Everything. No, 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 two or three sentences. We are supposed to work it. We've been asleep at the hell now, guys, for decades. And uh, we've been asleep and going about our lives and letting them, trusting them to do, uh, look after us. They've, uh, they've been having fun, let's say, okay, we've been asleep. So we have a duty, my generation, the generation before me, and the generation after me, and the generations to come, we've got a duty to, to start telling them what we want. This is our country, we're not bad people, we're not terrorists, we're not you know, out uh, to hurt or harm any. We're not out uh, for free and we're just looking for something free. What we're looking for is just a fair and a, 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 and amenable and an equitable society. We can all live together and not be you know, scratch each other's eyes out and face the sheer corruption that's at every level of government from top to bottom now. And every public body is absolutely saturated. Corruption is the norm. <coughs> This is the fact, right? It's so normal when you point out to a lot of these people, they don't realise what they're doing is actually corruption, what they're doing is actually corrupt, and what they're doing is technically criminal. So, tonight, uh, we're not going to be doing all that. We come to the Ashton Meet or listen to the radio show. Uh, uh, there's podcasts available from the last three shows on uh, on uh, New Borders Radio. It's a radio station on the internet. And please, please, please do listen to this. If you're interested in this subject, right, you can't afford to miss it, right? I'll put up pretty much two years worth of research of information dumped it. So you'll have to listen to it two or three times, probably, uh, to pick up the, the facts and information. It is life-changing, and you'll understand more about who, 
best get more depth into this. Yeah, uh, I've covered the fact that you're a franchise. How many people in the room do you're a franchise? One, two, three. Yeah, listen to the radio show, explain it, and I bring the evidence to, to prove you are a franchise. If you don't know who you are, how can you possibly start exercising your rights? How can you possibly start, start talking and uh, asserting your, 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 your power? If you don't even know where that power lies or what you are, yeah? So this is, this is a gentle introduction. I also cover uh, allegories, uh, new subject allegories also, well there's a whole raft of things I cover. If you go over the last three weeks, listen to the podcasts, they're two hours long, uh, I promise you, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, because I read a lot of books. And I've got another mantra, uh, I read a lot of books written by very smart people, some of that rubs off on me, yeah, so you get smart by reading books written by smart people. Yeah, I'm, I'm not smart. So we'll have a bit of fun tonight. What we're going to do today is just be examining yourselves. Now, if you don't know, take part in the exercises, we're going to have some simple experiments, a bit of social fun. Uh, if you don't know, take part, that's entirely okay with yourselves, yeah? But it would be, it would be good fun for us to, to take part. So you, you'll be looking to have a neighbour you can work with for some of these, these simple exercises at the start. Uh, and I promise you it'll be difficult, okay? I'm going to ask you simple questions. The simple questions are the most difficult ones. So for the first hour or so, we'll do uh, meet yourself. You've never had that lesson before, have you? Uh, do you really have free will? I'll play some videos, which will, if you haven't seen them before, will change your view and will make you examine things a lot more closely. And then the second hour, I'll talk about, so see how much time we've got, I can't really talk about 10 hours of presumption of authority. Uh, I'll do that in the radio show. So uh, we'll sort of briefly touch on presumption of authority depending on which time we have, yeah? So, uh, can we followed by monkeys? Or is it monkeys leading us? Okay, I'm calling the owners Rob B. Uh, I am learning for myself who I am and uh, who I, in inverted commas, I am. Why is that capital letter not a small i? Things like that. Uh, I started the fascinating journey of self-discovery and I will now share my findings with you, some of my findings at a very beginning level. But this is stuff I wish somebody had started to taught me, this, uh, this is something that taught me, it showed me at the very start, it would have cleared my mind of all the cobwebs and, and programming we've had, yeah, conditioning we've had, and it cleared it out the way and it moved forward faster. So I'm hoping that I can, I can provide a service. Okay, uh, how many of you have read Brave New World by Aldo Huxley? Is it in many of you have read it, right? This is a really, really good book, it's a British author. I would urge you to go, you can get on the net, uh, buy a copy, I mean, please do. Uh, it's called Brave New World by Aldo Huxley. Uh, and the essence of it is, is that you've got the new civilised society living in there, a steel you know, city, glass of steel city, and they're all taking drugs to sort of keep everybody happy and calm and everything's very structured and regimented and then outside the city is where the savages live and uh, uh, the savages are living in you know, caves and you know, one thing or other but however, uh, what it is, it's an analogy for the legal person versus the natural person or man or woman whatever you wish to call it, yeah? So the book's a very, very good book. I don't want freedom, I want God, I want poetry, I want real danger I want freedom, I want goodness, I want sin, said the savage. In fact, said Mustafa Moni, you're claiming the right to be unhappy. All right then, said the savage defiantly, I'm claiming the right to be unhappy. Not to mention the right to grow old and ugly and impotent, the right to have syphilis and cancer, the right to have too little to eat, the right to be lousy, the right to live in constant apprehension of what may happen tomorrow, the right to catch typhoid, the right to be tortured by unspeakable pains of every kind. There was a long silence. I claim them all, the savage said at last. Mustafa Mon shrugged his shoulders. You're welcome, he said. Yeah. That's wrong, man. I'll give it to you. Another speech by the savage. He's been uh, uh, causing demon to be insane in the city because he's not city wise. Uh, they've, they've locked him up in a mental asylum and uh, he's, he's managed to sort of break free. He's leaning out a window and he's shouting to the rest of the, the, the inmates, Don't you want to be free and men? Don't you even understand what manhood and freedom are? Rage was making him fluent. The words came easily in a rush. 
Don't you? He repeated. But he got no answer to his question. Very well then, he went on grimly. I'll teach you. I'll make you be free whether you want to or not. And pushing open a window that looked onto the inner court of the hospital, he began to throw little pill boxes of soma tablets and handfuls out into the area. Okay, if you read the book, you'll understand a bit more about that. Okay, Pink Floyd did it right. How long ago was that? 79. Okay, Pink Floyd the wall. Right, we're going to have a bit of fun here now. now I got this myself, and I must admit, I was like, wow, it was difficult. I think it was difficult. So again, if you don't want to take part, it's that's fine, but you know, please, please uh, 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 take part. Okay, so ex exercise one, experiment one. Right, I want you to turn to your neighbour and have him ask him or her, who are you? Okay, so we'll do that, take maybe 30 seconds. If you do one or two, think about it in, in one or two sentences, say, looking in their eyes, I am, and finish that sentence, yeah? And then what we'll do is, we'll turn it around and do it the other way around, right? So be honest, be honest with yourself, and this will be look in the eyes when you say it. Okay, so have a think, ask a question, have a think, we'll give it 30, 40 seconds, and do it, do it yourself. Have you got it? You went turn it around now, do it the other way around. The person who's asking the question before, now it's asking the question. It's a difficult question, isn't it? Okay. So you can settle down again, guys. We'll move on yeah, to the next bit right now. Very good. Did any, anyone get any points to make with that? Did you find that difficult? I should look at someone in the eyes and say, I am. If you've been honest. If you've been honest, is that... Yes. You know, did you paint a nice picture of it yourself? Did you tell me the truth? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Experiment two now. I was going to ask him to bring a mirror, but there's no way he can, he can get it sorted out. So what I should do is so just have some quiet now, please. Um, you looked in the mirror at some point today and you saw your reflection, yeah? So I'm asking people to do is to shut your eyes and look at imagine you're looking in that mirror looking at yourself, yeah? This is the hocus pocus stuff, why this is there's a reason for this. Uh, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, get comfortable looking at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, to yourself, don't talk. Be quiet, please. Uh, what you see positive about yourself. Okay, so just close your eyes, imagine you're looking in the mirror and say what you see positive about yourself. Are you open honest with yourselves, yeah? This is yourself, you're doing shit, isn't it? And then, so the same exercise. Now, again, what you see is negative about yourself. That's what it starts getting more difficult. So shut your eyes again, just imagine you're looking in the mirror at yourself. What do you see negative about yourself? Be honest with yourself. Any issues there? Did you find something difficult to that one? Be honest, honest with yourself. You can't bullshit yourself, remember. You can bullshit your neighbour. You can't, you can't, I'm sorry for a few that phrase, but it's true. You can't bullshit yourself. And it's difficult to critically analyse yourself, isn't it? It is hard. I find it hard. Everybody finds it hard to critically analyse yourself and really truly at yourself. And this is at the start of the journey of self discovery. It's only when you know where you're starting you start the journey. Yeah? So, is there any comments people got to make about that? Did you find that interesting or did you find that a bit disturbing? I think it's disturbing doing it. Anyway, everybody's, got, everybody's got their own, they're, we're all different, that's the thing. Nobody is right, nobody's wrong, we're all, we're all different. Some of us, you know, are, are different in different ways. So, yeah, absolutely, it's, it's, it's a very personal journey, that one. Okay, so the next one is, how's this one interesting? Well, look at me for 30 seconds and what do you see positive about me? walking through the gate. <laughs> okay, it's a very short list, that one. I'm going to try again. Negative this time. Look at me, what do you see negative about me? That's right. I may as well keep that. That's your opinion of me. That's your personal opinion of me, positive and negative, right? What I'm going to be showing you short, I'm going to move on to external influences and how someone's behaviour and the demeanour you know, can uh, uh, externally influence you, whether you like it or not, yeah. In fact, what we have presented, and I was like, people, uh, what I think is, um, well, um, um, well, 
I'm pretty sure if you don't mind what we'll do, you wouldn't put a list to this guy. If somebody comes and says, hello, my name's Rob, and blah, 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 right? You tend to listen to the person. So how you, how you sell yourself, how you promote yourself externally will affect your audience, and they will, they will respond likewise, yeah? Uh, it's a, a skill that can be learned. Okay, again, back to Huxley. A really efficient totalitarian state would be one in which the all-powerful executive of polit political bosses and an army of managers control a population of slaves who do not have to be coerced because they love their servitude. It's a very deep book, yeah? Mm -hmm. How many people genuinely think that they love their servitude? Because they know nothing else. Right, this is who you are. You have knowledge, interest, and experience, and uh, where interest and experience cross is what you naturally like to do. Where your knowledge and your interest cross is what you seek out to learn more of. And who you are is in that bit in the middle where it's knowledge, interest, and experience work, yeah? How many people believe that nonsense? Yeah, I know I've said it, but, oh yeah, actually, yeah, because you know you know what's along with it. Many of you went along with it. That, how many people know went along with that? To me, it's complete utter generation. They teach this in corporations, they teach this in schools, they teach this in universities, yeah? That those, those three things make you. We're far more complex than that. Absolutely far more complex than that. And that's simplifying it to the point of imbecility, right? Is that corporate model of our sales realistic? Uh, does it reflect the wild you or the domesticated you? We'll move on to that in a second half. The wild you or the domesticated you? What can you reasonably infer about the person that created that chart? Do you think you work for the company? Do you think you've been trained at university? Do you think you're repeating the bill that's leading to it? Again, I'm not here to, 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 to sell you an idea. Yeah? Really not here to do that. You know, I can be completely wrong. It's up to you guys to draw, to, to, to draw your own conclusion, what you think. However, I'm just presenting some information. And, uh, let people work with it as he will. Huxley. And that, put in the director sententiously, that is the secret of happiness and virtue. Liking what you've got to do. All conditioning names at that. Making people like their unescapable social destiny. As they get around the city. Right, just some thoughts before we get to some videos. Okay. Are we really masters of our own destiny? How many of you actually, and you, when you ask a question, who are you? How many of you said that master of one destiny? Okay. Or, or so likewise. Oh, it's not here. There's so many people. Right. Okay. Uh, do you have a private you and a public you? A good you and a bad you? How much do your value of other people's opinion of you matter to you? How much does this affect the persona you display to the world? When you're out there in the public, is that the real you or is that a character you're creating for this theatre called society? Is that a persona truthfully you or have you created your own principal character to replace your faulty one in that chapter that has been written and why? And who decides it's faulty or not? How much can your decision making process and free will be influenced consciously or subconsciously by external influence, influences with or without your own consent. And this is what we're going to go into now, right? Let me try and show what some really big experiences are, hardcore experiments, yeah, that were undertaken uh, back in the 60s and 70s. A lot of these experiments can never be repeated because it was so gruesome that, I mean, not gruesome in that it wasn't got sense, but they were so brutal uh, what they found on them uh, that they can never repeat these experiments again in a lot of countries, okay? So you may see how people, good people, can be easily coerced and becoming really bad and they'll, they'll go along with it and it's all to do with 